Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the uh, first block of talks after our plenary sessions. Um, we're going to start off with Jonathan Clark from the DOI Foundation. Um, Jonathan, take it away. Yeah, thank you. Thanks very much. This is really exciting. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, as you see, I'm going to use Mentimeter uh, throughout this talk. And let me just uh, post. Oops, that's the wrong one. If you go to menti.com and enter the code 566183, um, then you'll be able to uh, to take on the survey. Um, what I'm going to talk about this afternoon, next 25 minutes or so, is the P and PIDs, the persistence bit. It's something that I think we often take for granted. Um, and every so often in the DOI Foundation, we take another look at it, and we're doing that right now. Um, we have a working group at the moment looking at, at uh, what we do for persistence um, and more importantly what more we could do and so i'm going to share with you some of the questions that we've been asking our, our uh, members in the community um, in the form of a mentimeter and use that as the basis for uh, uh, for the discussion uh, please use the chat um, to ask me any questions or comment and i'm hoping if you really want to go deeply into this um, let's join in the slack channel afterwards so the first thing I wanted to say is uh, we we found uh, that Andrew uh, Trelaw's five persistences have been very helpful to uh, to get us to think about this. And he he uh, it, it's a little theoretical, but we think it's very useful. So we have the persistence of the identifier as a thing, a thing itself. We have the persistence of the binding between the identifier and the object. So for DOI, that's very often the URL. Then there's the persistence of the object itself, um, or some mechanism to handle its non-persistence stuff disappears sadly and then we've got the persistence of the service to resolve from the identifier to the object and then the persistence of the service for keeping the binding updated and in our world in the doi world those two things uh, are together in the registration agency but they don't have to be so keep that in the back of your mind each of the questions covers one of those um, and let me go on to the first these are pretty simple yes no questions it's open so please answer should we allow pids ever to be deleted yes no or is it a trick question Okay, I'm going to cut it short because I think we've. Uh, well, let's let it go on in the background. It's looking pretty, pretty clear. Um, should we allow PIDs ever to be deleted? No, and that's very much what uh, what we believe in the DOI Foundation. Um, once they're created, uh, they're persistent, and you should keep them, even if there's no possible chance of discovering them. Um, we think that that they should never be deleted. Although, having said that. Those 12 or 13 people who say yes, we think there might be edge cases um, where there might be a case for it, um, but they are really edge cases. They're probably very interesting. It goes a bit beyond the scope of what I wanted to talk about today, um, but it is rather interesting. The way we look at it is there are basically two reasons why um, uh, this question comes up. The first one is that it should never have existed in the first place. Something went wrong. Um, there should never be. Uh, it's just there. Um, in that case, uh, we put a tombstone page and we say, look, this persistent identifier shouldn't exist um, and, and will not resolve. So at least the person clicking on it gets some information. The second one is a bit more interesting. It could be that the DOI has been minted in error. Actually, there is a valid DOI. It's just this isn't it. And in that case, we use aliasing to alias the uh, uh, DOIs to each other. So even if you click on what is in fact an incorrect DOI, it will alias to the correct one. And that's that's how how we tackle it. Uh, edge cases. <laughs> nice, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna move on because it hopefully it gets a little bit more interesting for you all. I wanted to start basic. So here's the next question. Thank you to everyone who answered that one. 
Here's the next one. And of course, that was the uh, topic of the persistent, the identifier as a thing. So the next question is, should we have a process to check the PIDs resolve correctly? Again, yes, no. Oh, why is that not updating? Oh, there we go. You might try um, exiting present mode and going back in. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that's no, going. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I've got it on my phone where there too. So. I think you have your answer. <laughs> I think we do. I <laughs> shall carry on with this. So this is a this is an interesting question, and we asked our community this too, and and um, actually asked whether they do have a process, whether all our members and RAs have a process. Um, this is, of course, there should be. It's actually harder than you might imagine in in practice. Um, I'll check the chat is coming in. Hang on a minute. Okay. Um, So it's, it's harder to do in practice uh, very often. If we wanted to check whether every single DOI resolves, it would mean pinging some of the sites, some of the big publisher sites, for instance, and they have detection mechanisms against that and defense mechanisms. And so we think the way to go is, is to do a statistical analysis um, and take a, a, a representative sample of DOIs and check them. The other point that is important to make is there's no point having a process to check the PIDs. Um, if you don't have a process to correct them. And that, of course, is very important. And that involves whoever, remember, we've got the PIDs, they resolve. If they're not resolving, then there's something in the binding that's broken. And who can update that binding? Well, it's the owner of the object. And so there has to be a process and a reliable process of getting in touch with the, uh, the owner and get them to update the binding. Um, check periodically. Yep, that's a good point. Thanks for that question. And resolve correctly. Yes, that's a really good question. Thanks, Alex. Um, we have that. Um, was that yes, yeah, Alex. It's a really good question. What is resolve correctly? Um, it it's difficult if you're running a process. Um, how do you do that? Is it a machine that's resolving it? Do you try to be a human through the uh, through a browser? Um, are you getting to a landing page or the object itself? So this is altogether a lot. It's it's logical. It's clear. We agree totally. Everyone agrees we should do this. But actually making it happen is a good deal more difficult than you might think. So let's move on. To, and in fact, we have uh, most ones have a, a manual process. If you come across a DOI that doesn't resolve, then there is a way to report that. Let's move on. And meanwhile, I, while you're answering this one, I'm going to look at the chat. And we have been moving some of the questions into the ask a question section. Um, it looks like you did answer a couple of them already, but um, that might make it a little easier for you. Um, and also, you, you know that we will move over any unanswered questions into Slack afterwards. Yeah, from Daisy, the content be persistent. Yep, I'm coming to that. That's one of the uh, important ones. That's what this question is all about, in fact. Um, I also um, have to admit that I'm one of the Wyatt Earp answers. And I. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you for that. Yes, it's clear. Um, it does happen. The objects move. Um, they become orphans. Um, people don't uh, manage them correctly. Um, obviously, you do as a as a persistent identifier service. You do everything possible to track the owners, um, but just occasionally um, and more of, too often, I guess, the object disappears. What we do at the moment is we have a a generic two stone page on almost all of these sites, so it will at least not give you a dead 404 with nothing it would at least tell you some information that the object cannot be resolved but i think and and this is an ongoing discussion 
um, in the foundation at the moment in the community is I think we can do better than that. I think we could um, have a system that displays the metadata that was associated with that persistent identifier. And even though it no longer resolves, um, it would tell you at least where it was last known, where it was last seen or last accessible and all the information possible about it. And my colleague, uh, Paul Jessup, is very fond of quoting the example from the uh, Great Library in um, in Alexandria. Um, and wouldn't it be, I mean, that library burned down. Well, allegedly, I'll come back to that in a second. Um, it was destroyed um, or fell into, dis 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 into ruin and all of the books and the content was lost. But wouldn't it be amazing if we had the, the card catalog still from that library? And that's essentially what we're talking about here. Even if the objects disappeared because the repositories couldn't afford it or whatever the reason for it was, if we at least had the equivalent of the card catalog for all of those uh, um, objects, that at least would be something. And actually, when I was preparing for this, I went to look on uh, Wikipedia about that great library. And it turns out it probably didn't burn down. It's just that the Romans let it, uh, they didn't fund it properly. So it sort of just dwindled and, uh, and disappeared, which I think is a metaphor or a lesson for us all. So I'm going to go to the next one and take a look at the chat. So this, of course, was, was addressing what, uh, uh, what you said, Daisy. This is the persistence of the object. So here's an open question. I'm really interested in this because I'm think I, I this is really an ongoing thing for us. Suppose we put a tombstone page per PID that didn't resolve. What sort of information would be useful, do you think, to show on that page? And this is an open one, so please feel free. Of course, I'm doing some shameless uh, market research amongst you all. So meanwhile, I'll take a look at the questions. Yeah, not only check, but check periodically. Absolutely, uh, Alexander, that's that. Alexander, yeah, that's true. Of course, you have to do that. Yeah, orphan PIDs, could we do it on behalf of the owners? That's a great question. Someone asked that in the community too. Um, uh, the question is, how do we maintain that? Um, we can certainly keep the uh, the record live that will definitely happen we will never delete the pid the metadata associated with it is still there but how do we resolve to it when the resolution fails um, we could go look and see if it's perhaps been archived somewhere else that's a possibility um, but it's a great question Yeah, one thing that's come up uh, that's uh, from Daisy, a comment to that question as well. One thing that did come up in the RDA world was maybe we should have assertions on content that when you upload a piece of content, um, the content owner or the or the responsible person should make an assertion about how long that content will be guaranteed to be persistent. So perhaps you upload your data and the data repository says, well, we guarantee five years or 10 years or whatever the amount is, and that becomes an explicit declaration. Um, <laughs> it's 404 resolution, yeah, good point. We don't think so. I'm not sure I understand Romain David's question. Could you Could you submit another question just to amplify that, please? So the question is, are permanently moved resource resolving systems correct for PIDs? I'm not sure I get it, I'm sorry. Okay, so let's go to the slide. Yeah, latest known metadata, we think that, who register it, the date, all possible metadata, yep. The reason for deprecation, yep. And can you scroll down your Menti screen just so that people can see the other um, yep. answers, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, John. The last state in common language, metadata record. Yep. Ah, the new PID, if there is one. Well, that's what we use aliases for. So that that's that that situation is covered. If it's uh, been given a new PID, we should be tracking that. Much metadata as possible. Ah, that's a good one. Confirmation the PID is valid. That's a very good point. Wow, this is fantastic. 
Who minces a DOI? Yep. That's no negation. Yep. Super. Okay. So I think we have to accept as as PID providers that that objects will disappear and sometimes there's nothing we can do about it. But what I'm trying to think of is what can we do as service providers to provide at least as much as we can in that circumstance. So let's move on to the next question. This is deliberately a little bit um, uh, open-ended and you'll see why in a moment. A uh, question from Howard. Hi, Howard. That's a long time. Have you thought about crowdsourcing? Maybe there's a way for users to promote dead P uh, PIDs or live PIDs. Um, there is, I think, at least in our world, um, if a, a PID doesn't resolve, there's uh, either on the Tombstain page um, or in on the website, um, it gives you the opportunity to report it. Um, and and, and that, that does happen. Yeah, Pippi, thank you. What do I mean by archived? I'll come to that. So what did I mean by this? Well, um, we find actually there's a little bit of a confusion between what do we mean by archive? Um, and I'd like to distinguish between two situations and, and come to, to both of them. The first one is, is, is disaster recovery. Um, and the second one is business continuity. And so in the case of disaster recovery, let's say something goes offline, a machine burns out, something, either minor or major catastrophic, something happens to disrupt the service. Um, do we have an archive that we can fall back on um, to pull it up again? Um, and of course, the answer to that is, is yes. Um, the second question is, well, yeah, but what about business continuity? What if we're actually unable to continue the service for some reason? Is there something else we can do? And I have a follow-up question I'm gonna ask, and I'll put that one up now. Uh, so let's say it's an archive. It's not an in-house, it's not a backup. I really am talking about an archive. Then is this something that the service provider should do themselves or, or, uh, or and should they be using things like clocks or Portico or some of the third party or the internet archive? Meanwhile, I'll take a look at some questions. So one thing to note on Alexander's question uh, about orphan PIDs, um, that's a good question. One thing we do do is, is and I, those of you that came to my talk last year in, or last year in Lisbon, um, if a, re a registration agency um, ceases to exist, and then the uh, other registration agencies do um, take over those persistent identifiers and manage them on behalf of the owner. So we do have some level of that. Um, and there is some uh, um, possibility to do this, certainly possible, whether it happens all the time or happens automatically is a really good question. Yep, Internet Archive, someone mentioned that's a good point. So a couple of the RAs do use uh, clocks in this case. Um, and they also archive, and that's clear. We agree, we think it's really important um, that there's multiple uh, possibilities just in case you never know, um, you never know what's gonna happen. And this leads me, and I, time is going well, to start to get to the really difficult question. And this is one that we worry about all the time. So what should happen if the service provider, so in this case, the, uh, um, um, on, let me go, yep. What happens if, in this case, the DOI Foundation, but it could be whoever it is, it's ORCID, it's uh, it's Epic, it's whoever the service provider is. 
what is it if if we're unable to continue offering services? So it's business continuity. Um, one of the RAs, Crossref, can't continue. What happens? A question from Christian, can you share the data? Yes, I'm going to post, so after we finished, uh, I'm going to post the script that I'm running to, uh, plus all of the slides, plus the information I'm going to post to the uh, to the Sonodo page that Peter Pelusa have set up. Let me go to the slide and scroll through the answers. This is the key question. I know, I know, that's what I hope to get to. So I mentioned uh, that is we do have the system in the DOI where a, D, a RA will take over, and that has happened in the past. <laughs> Panic, yes. Replicated services, try to avoid the situation, yep. You scroll through it. A living will, yes, that's a really good point. Don't panic. Let me just scroll through for you and then I'll talk to some of these. So I think a lot of you have said um, what what we think, um, that you do everything. This is typically a risk that you mitigate all the time um, and you try and manage things carefully. You keep reserves in the bank to for a problem, just like last year, um, you know, something like COVID comes along, can cope. How long can we, can we carry on paying the bills to keep the lights running um, and, and really think about business continuity? So I think the first answer to the question is clear. Um, it, it sounds very good question. When we raise this, we, we hear people say things like, um, well, just archive the data in clocks and someone else can take it over. And the point that I wanted to make is that is also not as easy as it sounds because sure, we can archive the data um, but it's very difficult to archive the know-how. I mean, for some, for Crossref, for instance, it's been going for longer than 20 years. That's 20 years of know-how, and, and and archiving that knowledge is very difficult, and the same for the foundation. Um, and just say, well, we have the data, we can continue. Just think of thousands of, of people that manage objects. Each of them has to be somewhere in a database to contact them, and they have to know what to do. So this is a non-trivial situation, um, and 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 not and it's something that that exercises us. Um, we call it. Uh, uh, we have the, the 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 technical infrastructure for the DOI, but we also have what we call the social infrastructure, and we really haven't um, uh, we haven't found a good solution yet of of uh, of archiving the social infrastructure. What we do do. Um, is in the event, for instance, uh, I, those of you again who were at the presentation last year knew that we had an almost near-death experience ten years or so ago, where we almost went bankrupt. After that, we put a clause in our agreement that it should that ever happen again, that one of that, that we could restart without being taken over. So one of the RAs could actually make a a, a bid to take over the organisation and restart it. So we do as much as we can to try and preempt the effects of this. Um, but I think it's something that's really important to, to deal with. So that was the questions uh, that I had for you. And now I'm going to look at the, we've got, how long have we got, John? Another five minutes? No, one minute. Um, yeah, we have about a minute or two. If you want to just um, sum up some of the key points, I think we have enough time for a couple more minutes. Yeah. So some of the questions, so the key points I think are, um, we really like the, the Andrew Tullor approach. We think it's a good way of looking at things. And we think each one of those is worth taking a look at and deciding what do we do and what more could we do. And it's something that I think is is is, is for all bid service providers should be doing this on a regular basis. Um, we are really open to hearing suggestions. Thank you so much for filling in the questionnaire. It'll really help. Um, we'll also 
as I said, I'll post this to the site um, and I'll continue the conversation in Slack. And you can always ask me later for the information. Um, let me see if I can tackle a question. Um, I think there's a couple uh, comments that they really people really like the interactivity. Um, okay. and I know you were talking about having um, the ability to do some market research, and I actually um, I was surprised, pleasantly surprised at how you know, thoughtful and, and, and in depth some of these answers are. And I think you really got what you wanted out of this because there definitely is um, some feedback from the community about how to handle persistence within. I mean all persistent identifiers, but specifically DOIs as well. Um, so it seems like it was a very successful uh, format. So thanks for putting this all together. No, that's great. That's really, been really fun. It's kind of strange having interactions sort of half what, with chat. Yeah. And one, you know, you're yeah. used to a room. No, for it, oh, you did a great cool. job of like trying to keep an eye on the chat, which I know is, is hard to do when you're presenting. Um, so we, we'll go ahead and move over some of the, the questions into Slack. Um, and you can just reply to those through a thread. And it, um, thank you for um, mentioning the Zenodo page. So we're asking all speakers to um, upload their slides and their information into Zenodo. So Jonathan said that he'll do that, um, including some of the information that we, he's collected here. So that'll be available in the next couple of days. Um, but I think uh, with that, I'll just you know give my virtual clap. Uh, on behalf of the whole audience and say thank you very much and we'll um, go ahead and get prepped for the next session. All right. Okay. My pleasure. Thanks for organizing.